pumpkin protest, direct action, and the role of music in the counterculture of the 1980s. Uh, now, when I say direct action, there may be a lot of people here that were kind of on a different wavelength than me and were thinking I was talking about next slide, please. I was talking about perhaps this film, starring Wolf Lundgren, Daddy Chase Man, got from Rocky Four. This is a 2004 film called Direct Action. I don't really know what it's about, but I think he kills a lot of people. <laughs> I'm talking about something completely different. Sorry if that's, that's why you're here. I'm talking about, next slide please. This group called Direct Action. Uh, so, there was a, a group of people that were arrested on January 20th, 1983. Julie Gomez, Jerry Hanna, Ann Hansen, Doug Stewart, and Brent Taylor. And the reason why they were arrested is because the, the police had been monitoring, to, monitoring them for several months. And they had been carrying out several, well, more than several, violent actions against property of or, belonging to organizations that they thought were hindering uh, humanity, that were causing people to suffer and were causing all kinds of injustices in the world. So they went to the extreme and started attacking them directly. Their intention was not to hurt people, but unfortunately in, in, a, in one of their actions, some people were hurt. So, I don't know if you've noticed, but it was the early 80s, you can tell by their mustaches over in that corner. Um, next slide, please. So, direct action, their first, they, they carried out a series of, uh, I guess, kind of you, terrorist attacks, actions, uh, against targets that they felt, like I was saying before, were hindering or destroying or just having a negative effect on the world. And one of the things they had a really big problem with was the environment. They did not like dead fish, they did not like dead trees, and they did not like those factory things. At all. So, in, I think it was the spring of 1980, I'm not very good at dates, I'm not that good at historian sometimes, but they, they filled up a big van full of dynamite, and they were in Vancouver, and they got on a van, hopped on the ferry, went to Vancouver Island, and then set up a bunch of explosives, explosives at a BC Hydro station, and then blew it up. Because BC Hydro at the time was developing kind of like uh, some more infrastructure to increase energy wattage so they could sell power to the United States and such. But Direct Action felt that by doing that, it was being detrimental to the environment. They were destroying uh, trees and fish, all kinds of stuff. It was terrible. And so they carried out this action because they really liked the environment. Now, one thing they didn't like was, next slide, please. They didn't like Ronald Reagan at all. Uh, as you can see, Ronald Reagan is flying on a magic bullet, I think, in a cowboy hat and a gun. And this, this picture kind of personifies their hatred of the Cold War and their hatred of Ronald Reagan. And they felt that the whole arms race and how he was isolating things in the early 80s against the USSR was, again, harmful to the world. So they thought the political process, like in terms of activism, you know, protesting with picket signs had gone far enough. They, it, it wasn't having any effect. So they got in their van again, filled it up with dynamite again, and this time they drove all the way to Toronto from Vancouver, straight to T-Dots. And when they got to Toronto, I almost said New York today, sorry. When they got to Toronto, they, they thought, okay, we'll take it to Lytton Systems, which was an industry just outside of Toronto near the airport, and we will drive these, this truck filled with dynamite, park it in front of the guard tower, and then when the guards see it, and we call it in and say, hey, there's a bomb that's about to go off, you gotta clear out, because we don't like Lytton Systems, and you guys are developing cruise missiles for the US, and the Cold War is wrong. So, that almost happened, but unfortunately the guards didn't see the, the truck, and so they called it in, Julie Belmas called it in and said, hey, we're going to blow up your factory. And they're like, what? So they kind of just wandered around a bit, uh, told people, we think there's a bomb, bomb threat, and it blew up while everybody was still there, unfortunately. Uh, nobody was killed, but it caused a lot of serious injuries, and really uh, engaged 
just kind of like a manhunt for people trying to find who these terrorists are. And uh, yeah, so people weren't happy. Things are getting blown up. They drive back to Vancouver. Next slide, please. And another thing that they really cared about in direct action was women's rights. And in Vancouver at the time, there was a, a series of pornographic video stores called Red Hot Video. They were selling these terrible videos to, to anybody that wanted to buy them over was like, nice in Ontario. Uh, with like rape and torture and all these horrible things. So they were like, well, why don't we just blow these places up? And so they, they did. <laughs> and, uh, by this time, the police were on to them. And this, was in, this was in the winter, or I guess the end of two, or 1982. And shortly after that, they were arrested. But it's just really interesting to see these, these uh, kind of political problems or these issues that were getting them to engage to the point where they felt that they had to carry out violent actions to try and wake people up to say, you know, the environment is being destroyed and the Cold War is going on, Ronald Reagan is flying his bullets and women's rights are being abused, wake up people. And this was actually part of a wider, a wider movement in places like Vancouver that was very integral to the punk scene there. This is where the music comes in, this is where we tie things together. So, next slide please. Jerry Hanna, one of the, one of the uh, guys in direct action, which, okay, this will be the only profound, like this is the only complicated thing. So, they called themselves direct action. Uh, when they were arrested, the mainstream media called them the Squamish Five, because they were arrested near Squamish, which is just outside of uh, Vancouver. And then the underground press called them the Vancouver Five. So direct action, Squamish Five, Vancouver Five. It's not getting any more complicated than that. So, don't worry about it. But Jerry Hanna, or Jerry Useless, was in the punk band The Subhumans before joining up with direct action. The Subhumans started out in the early LA, or, sorry, the early Vancouver punk scene in 1978, and they wrote a lot of politically charged songs. For example, they wrote songs they wrote songs like, uh, Jerry Useless himself wrote the song, Slave to My Dick, very PC, about, I guess, like, one of those guys off Jersey Shore, those kind of people, or, uh, he wrote a song called, Fuck You, and that was about, you know, one of those good punk songs of, like, you know, resist authority, fight oppression, all that jazz. Uh, Death to the Sickoids is actually about uh, the mainstream media and kind of just brainwashing people and keeping them a fix on stuff that was happening on the front page and letting all this other stuff slide. Uh, Inquisition Day is about the rise of a totalitarian government or an authoritarian leader. They can happen anywhere. Firing Squad is about the Iranian Revolution in um, the late 70s. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and about just, you know, they were trying to fight off this corrupt government, but then they ended up doing all these horrible things themselves. Uh, so now, oh sorry, it can't stop. Uh, to give you an example of the songs that I'm talking about, I thought we could have a choose your own adventure, and we just picked one of these songs and played it off YouTube. Excuse me, sir, can you uh, cue that up? It's on YouTube. So if you go down to YouTube, I didn't know what you were going to pick, I thought maybe you'd say it. Uh, oh yeah, they also wrote a song with the national anthem integrated in it called Oh Can of God. But actually, see that middle? On the... Alright, hit play. Let's see if this works. So I just see volume, which of course gives me a chance for an innovative drink of my beer. 